So in the last section of the lecture, we talked about one of the cures to overfitting, which is using validation. This idea that instead of evaluating your model based on data that you fit the model on, you have to collect new data and evaluate your model on that. And that is a, a, a nicer, truer way of evaluating how well the model actually is doing. Now, this is all well and nice if you can really go out onto the field and collect more data or go back to the lab and collect more data. It's wonderful. But realistically, usually when you set down to a data set, you don't have this luxury of simply requesting more data. Right? You are handed the data set. Maybe it's small, maybe it's large. But usually, that's kind of all you have because the expense of collecting data, more data, is, uh, takes both time and money. Right? So you don't have that luxury. So sometimes, you don't get to do validation right? because you can't just have access to more data. And so in those circumstances, there's a really useful trick that we can play that has a lot of the same features as validation without making you go out and collect more data. And so we're going to be talking about this section is the idea of doing cross validation. Okay? And this is a trick that we can play when all we have is the bucket of data that we're given and we don't get any more. But we also don't want to go into the risk of overfitting where we fit our model to all the data we have and then we have no way of really fairly assessing which of our possible models is really the best one. So the idea of cross-validation is that we're going to try to do the same thing as validation, not evaluate the model based on data that we're training the data on, but we're not going to collect more data. So we're really going to play a little trick here. So let's say that here is my bucket of data. Here's my bucket of data. Okay, this is all the data I have. Maybe it's a, you know, a few thousand, a few million, something. Okay, here's my collection of data, and it's right here. Now, instead of fitting the model, all my data, what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to take a random subset of this data set, and I'm just going to hold it back. I'm going to pretend just for a little while that I don't have it. Right? Let's say that I pick this little section here, and then I'm going to hold aside. Hold aside as test. Okay? This is going to be my test set later. I'm going to take the remainder of the data, everything that's remaining after I held aside this tiny little bit is my test data, evaluate the model, no, um, uh, fit the model onto the rest of the data, and but then come back to this little bit of data that I completely held aside, it didn't change at all, and use that to evaluate the model. Okay? Now, you might be asking, well, how do I decide which section of data to hold aside? Right? And there's really no right answer. I'm doing it randomly. You can hold aside any data you want. Well, but is holding aside one piece of data better than others? Wouldn't doing this over and over again give you different results? And the answer is yes, it would. So the way we do that is realistically, we're going to be doing this exact same procedure over and over and over randomly with holding different pieces of data as the test data every single time. So maybe on iteration one, we're going to withhold this piece of data, and then we withhold this piece of data, same thing. Take the rest of the data that we're going to call the training data. So everything that's not in this bracket is the training data. We train the model on that. And then we assess that particular model on the test data. And then we repeat this over and over and over again, withholding different sections, random sections of the data as a test data, and repeat the same procedure. Right? And we can do this many, many times. And every single time, we're going to get an error out. So this is error 1, error 2, error 3, et cetera, et cetera. And so the cross-validated error at the end of this procedure for the model, we can report both as the mean of all of my errors, and we can actually now also quantify the standard deviation of all of my errors. And this will give us a really good idea of how well this particular model works on that data without having to go and collect more data. And the cross-validated error evaluated this way is what we can use to compare models of different kinds, models of different numbers of parameters. And the cross-validated error, um, it, it gives you not only the mean, but also the standard deviation of the error. Right? So what does the standard deviation of the error mean in this particular case? Now, what if there's a chunk of data that, because I picked them randomly, there's some instance where it just works really, really well based on the, the model that was trained on the rest of the data. So I'm going to get a really tiny error. 
Well, I got lucky that one time. But it's okay to get lucky sometimes because I'm going to do this a few hundred or a few thousands of times, depending on the statistics of the data set. And so um, a couple of rules about usually good practice of how to do this. Um, kind of a normal thing to do would be to hold aside 10 or 20% of the data set at any given time as the test set. And um, a fair number of repetitions of this process would be, let's say, 100, a few hundred or to a thousand times, depending on your data set and how big that is. Right, so these are decisions that you have to make. But this general framework of doing cross-validation is a really powerful one because, again, it is not about regression. It is not about fitting any one particular type of model to the data. It gives you a method of evaluating each of your models on data that was never used in a training process without ever going in and collecting more data. Okay, so let's try this on a little bit of uh, just random data, fake data, fake data that I've made up. So I'll show you a, a little more explicitly how this is done. Right. So what we've got here is a thousand data points that I've made, um, and y is a function of x is um, it's a linear function just because I made it that way. So it's 1.5 y is 1.2 times x plus some random Gaussian noise that I've added on top. So here is uh, what the data looks like. It looks like the following, right? We have horizontal line x and vertical axis we have y, and we want to uh, fit some kind of model to that data, right? So the model that we're going to fit is a linear model, right? Because that makes sense. And so what we're going to do is let's first code um, how to do E1, how to do one instance of holding aside a random subset of the data, fitting the data on the, on the, on the remaining data, which we're going to call the training data, and evaluating that model on the test data without ever touching the test data before the evaluation point. This is really important. Okay, So let's say um, that uh, I have all of these uh, 1,000 points. Right? And I want to withhold a random 100 of them as my test data. So my test data is, um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle the numbers 1 to 1,000 in some random order using the ram perm command. So rand list, um, I'm going to make this a list of random numbers, rand perm of uh, the length of x. Okay. Now, what this does, let me just show you, if you have not come across this particular function before, um, is the following. Right? If I type in rand perm, random permutation of 5, I am going to get the integers 1 through 5 in some random order. I run it again. Here's another instance of that. I run it again. Here's another random instance of that. And you get the idea. Right? So the, the, per, the, the parameter it takes is number of integers you want, one through that number. So rand perm of 1,000 are the integers one through 1,000 in some random permitted order. And every time I call the function, it gives me a new random instance of it. Right? So that's what I'm doing here. Length of uh, x in this particular case is going to turn out to be 1,000. Right? And so I'm going to make a random list of integers between 1 and 1,000. And I'm going to take the first 100 as my test set. So the test set is uh, the rand list. I want the first 100 numbers. And uh, the remainder is 101 to the end is going to be my training set. Okay, so let's uh, fit linear model to the training data, and we can do that by saying p equals polyfit. Uh, now instead of using all of x and y, right, and fitting a first order polynomial to it, we're going to take only the training set and ignore the test set, like so. right? And then we're going to assess the linear model on test data. So the error is going to equal polyval of, uh, of p on x of test. So here's all my test data. right? I'm going to get the difference between the model and the actual numbers that I was holding aside. So remember, this is now, instead of evaluating an x and y, I'm evaluating an x test and y test. right? Uh, and just like before, we're going to take the sum of all of these numbers after we've squared them. And I'm going to divide by 100, because that's the number of tests that I have. Okay.
that's how I would assess the linear model on the test data, right? Now, this is just one instance of the cross-validation. Really, I want to write a loop and do this over and over again, right? And importantly, this entire thing has to be repeated over and over again, because every single time, I want to go ahead and generate a new random permutation of the list, right? So every data point basically has an ID, and I'm going to permute the list of IDs and pull out a random 10% every time to hold aside as my test data. So let's say that we want to do uh, 100 iterations, right? And we're going to write a for loop so we can go from i equals 1 to a number of iterations. And then every time I go in there, I'm going to generate one of these random lists, fit the linear model on the training data, assess the model on the, on the test data, and I'm going to save all of these errors um, in a vector that has the same number of elements as the number of iterations that I'm doing. So here we go. I've evaluated that. Right? So let's go back and look at what E turns out to be after running this code. Um, so E should have 100, is a vector of 100 elements. And so let's double check and make sure that's correct. That's correct. This is exactly what we expect. We wanted to run 100 iterations, and we have, so that's good. Uh, if you look at E, it's a giant list of numbers. But what we care about is not what any of the particular one of these numbers are. You can see some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. Rather, we care about what the mean of E is. Okay. Now, this is the cross-validated error, this number right here, because it's the mean of doing the cross-validation of the model on, on, on test data over and over and over again and taking the mean. Okay? And so even though uh, this is a rather simple example, I hope it illustrates a general point and gives you a little bit of code to start with. And what you really want to do is, uh, remember before, we can never say that this model is the best model ever. right? It's always, is this model, model better than the other one? So what you'd want to do is contrast the linear model with a different model do cross-validation on both of them and compare them and say which one has a lower cross-validated error. And that's how you would uh, go about assessing and comparing multiple models with validation and cross-validation.